degrees. You can see that with that angle, I'm not directly opposing the force of gravity. It's not bars and balance straight above the shoulders, straight above where it should be, above the hard mechanical levers, your bones. By having it back like this or straight above your eyes, it is a very disadvantageous mechanical position, plus it's very, very hard on the shoulder structures, particularly the bicepital tendon. I've addressed many, many bicepital tendonitis issues uh, that have come about because of trying to finish with the bar above the eyes. A lot of the coaches that teach this ending also promote bringing the bar to the upper stomach creating a very, very, very uh, large, unnecessary range of motion. From here the bar is driven up and supposed to finish above the eyes. The absolute best way to develop the proper bar path specific to your length of lever, specific to your genetic makeup, is to simply lower the bar under control to roughly the pec ab line and to drive the bar with as much force as possible while maintaining whole body rigidity, while staying flexed. If you keep all your musculature flexed, you lower and you drive, your body is going to make the intricate adjustments necessary to find its most efficient path. The bar body does not like to be inefficient. It will take care of the proper bar path for you. Again, all you simply must do is to get in the proper position, maintain whole body rigidity as you're performing the lift, being aggressive and driving the bar as hard as possible, and the body will find its optimal bar path, its most efficient, most efficient bar path. So that's all you simply need to do. You don't need to, to overcomplicate the issue by trying to follow some pre-manufactured condition or some silly or excessive range of motion. My goal, one of my goals in all these videos is to give your natural ability back to you. To show you that your body already knows how to do many of these things as long as you follow some basic, very basic rules. Another area that seems to cause a lot of confusion is elbow position. Where is the elbow in relation to the barbell? Um, general rule of thumb, and it will apply to almost all trainees, is that the elbow will stay underneath the bar, directly underneath the bar where the forearm is perpendicular to the ground. Now, again, you don't need to be focusing on all those specifics. If you follow the general recommendations, the general rules I've given you, the body will take care of that itself. But I want to go ahead and address some of the things that are talked about that are either misunderstood by trainees or it's just misinformation in general. Now, one of those pieces of misinformation is trainees are taught to take the elbows and rotate them inward like this. Now, in general, that's not too bad of an idea and can work for some. The, the thought process there is, or the goal, is that by rotating the elbows in, it'll help to uh, create more contraction in the upper back musculature. Again, I don't think that's necessary if you follow the general rules that I spoke of. But, as far as rotating the elbows under, it can cause some problems. First of all, when you try to rotate the elbows under, you're getting a lot of, without, and this is an oversimplification, but you're getting a lot of undesirable forces into the elbow and into the wrist area. Uh, with the rotation of the ulna and radius in the forearm, you are basically twisting some ligaments and tendons around and then putting them under some pretty extreme duress as the bar is lowered and raised. If you want to rotate the elbows in, if it doesn't cause pain, rotate them in without abducting the humerus next to your body. Or in other words, 
In other words, without, you can rotate them in, but do not pull the arm, the humerus, the upper arm bone, into your side as you're doing it. As you can see, look how funny it's cocking my wrist and creating a funny angle versus the bar being straight above the forearm. It's actually at a funny angle. It's kind of trying, it's like trying to bastardize or hybridize a close grip bench with a regular grip bench press. Now, if you want to try rotating the elbows in, do not keep them in alignment with the bar. Don't try to rotate and then abduct the arms next to the side because there are coaches that teach to pull the, to pull the elbows beside your body, to abduct the upper arm. All that's going to cause is injury and inefficient benching. As I stated earlier, you don't really need to worry about all these little specifics, eccentricities, the rotating up. As long as you get tight, flex the entire musculature, keep your upper back retracted, the body's going to align itself way better than you can. But if you want to try the elbow rotation technique, make sure that the elbows stay underneath the bar. Don't try to, again, abduct the humerus next to your side. As I just mentioned, and I want to reiterate, it's going to cause a bunch of undesirable forces in the entire kinetic chain, from the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder. Now, the other extreme elbow position you want to avoid is the elbow behind the bar. Holding the elbows more towards your head, like this again. Now the elbows are behind the bar, and it does put a lot more of the stress onto the pecs, particularly at the bottom position, but the trade-off is that if you do this over a long period of time, or particularly if you handle heavy weights for lower repetitions, that additional stress that you will feel into your pec will work against you by actually ripping the muscle. It also creates a lot of bad stress into what is known as your bicepital tendon into the shoulder area. So you want to try to avoid holding the elbows back more towards your head. Now I want to cover proper grip width. Um, now keep in mind, we're talking about the regular bench press here, not a close grip bench press, a regular bench press. The goal here is to establish the proper width that is going to stimulate the largest area of muscle that is most responsible for moving as much weight as possible during a regular grip or a regular bench press. That is, we want to put your grip in a position that stimulates your pectoralis as, as safely as possible with getting as much assistance from your anterior delt and tricep as possible. Now the key word there is safety, safely stimulating the pecs as much as possible. And I'll come back to that in a moment. I have most trainees start with a width, a grip width, that is roughly anywhere from six to seven inches wider than their shoulders. Now, this is taking into account a trainee who does not have any shoulder problems or shoulder limitations. Their shoulders are healthy. From here, most trainees are going to deviate only approximately two to three inches in or approximately two to three inches wider than what I originally stated as a good beginning position. The main factor here is going to be length of someone's arms. Someone who has longer arms is going to grip a little wider. Someone who has shorter arms can grip a little bit more narrow. Now getting back to what I was saying as far as grip width and stimulating the pecs as much as possible safely. If you take a wider grip than what I recommend, a, what is known as a wide grip bench press, you will definitely get more pec stimulation. But by going wider like that, without going into a lot of detail, you're getting some undesirable forces on the shoulders again. Yes, you'll feel more pec and get more pec stimulation, but it's not worth the trade-off of the risk that you could get, uh, or the injuries that you could get, 
uh, from gripping that wide. Now you can see that I have marked here what are standard uh, uh, rings on an Olympic barbell. These rings are standard on most Olympic barbells. Most trainees are going to start somewhere between having their first finger on the ring to having their little finger on the ring. So it's going to vary somewhere, like I said, approximately two to three inches wider than what I said is a normal start or two to three inches more narrow. And it just is necessary to wherever you feel you can move the most weight possible without any shoulder discomfort. That is the key, to move as much weight as possible as safely as possible. Let's review the basics of proper bench pressing, of good, safe, effective bench pressing. Get your body in the proper position. Dig your feet in. Arch your lower back. Retract your upper back. Squeeze those upper back muscles together so it protects your shoulders and so that you get the most leverage as possible and get the most pec stimulation as possible. Keep your body tight throughout the set. Keep all your muscles flexed. Take a big breath at the top of the movement, hold that breath until you start to drive the weight back upwards. Of course, unless you have blood pressure problems. Don't worry about where your elbow is. Simply flex your muscles as hard as possible, lower to the pec ab line, and drive the bar hard back up while maintaining a retracted position. Your body will show you the most effective, most efficient bar path. Simply, again, take a big breath, maintain all over body tension, keep your muscles tight, lower to the pec ab line while keeping the shoulder blades retracted, drive up while keeping the shoulder blades retracted, and your body will show you the most efficient bar path. It's not complicated. Don't overcomplicate the issue. Simply let your body show you the best way to bench press. Stay focused. Concentrate. Boom. Concentrate. Do one rep at a time. Oh. Be on this rep. Oh. Settle. Drop. Perfect. Oh. Stay tight. Grab. Oh. Good. Big air. And I'm going to cut you there. Wow. Shit. I'm going hard. Lower the bar down. Pause. Push. Take as much air as you get in your lungs. Squeeze the bar harder. Do this stuff that requires effort, not thinking. Squeeze it so much tight. You go get this. Squeeze it tight. Squeeze as hard as you can. Now fill your lungs. Do this rep as hard as you can. Drive it. That's, now that's better. Set it down. Then go. Is that already giving in? Squeeze the bar hard. Push it. There you go. Craig, drive it to the top. There's more effort in there. Drive it. Yeah. Crush this last one. Big air. Pause. Drive. Nothing.